So with my small return to making Walking Dead videos, I wanted to finally do something I haven't done in a long time. And this has been a heavily anticipated thing for a lot of you guys and gals that have asked me. In today's video, I will be discussing the top 10 mysteries that were never answered slash are left open in the Walking Dead Telltale series. This goes from any season. I'm not going to be including The Walking Dead Michonne because there's nothing really I could think of that would be constituted as a big, big mystery there that I could put in the top 10. So what I'm going to have in this list is 10 options as well as two honorable mentions. Um, if you have anything else so that may, you know, you may constitute as a mystery that wasn't answered, leave it down below in the comments. But these are just, you know, 10 or 12 that I thought up of. So I may not have the same ideas as most of you all, but these are very big ones to me, and these are constituted as the biggest mysteries. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you believe is the biggest mystery that has never been answered in this series, and do you think we'll ever get an answer to it at some point? I know the future of The Walking Dead, it's going to be interesting to see. Now, before I start this video, if you guys do me a favor, drop a like on the video. Let's try to get 2,000 likes. Drop me a topic, a top 5 or 10 video you'd like to see. I might do another one in about a couple weeks. Be sure to subscribe if you guys are new. And be sure to join the 32% of people that are subscribed. If you're part of that 68%, consider subscribing. You will be kept up to date on the latest information in the games I cover. And we greatly would appreciate it as we're on the road to 250,000 subscribers. Alright everyone, that's been it for the video. I'm very excited to do this and I hope you guys are excited to watch this. A lot of time and effort was put into this, so great would appreciate any support, and you guys have a great one. Enjoy the video, and doodles. So with number 10, this is something I wish they would have answered, and I wish we would have gotten more clarity on, and that is in regards to Tennessee. Now, what am I specifically talking about here? I'm talking about his face. We all know he has burn marks on his face. We all tried to figure out, and there were even, you know, predictions, theories I was making during season four, predicting maybe it could have been something that with the one of the buildings looked like it was burned down, but it was confirmed by one of the developers that that was not the case. And we actually never got an answer to this question. I, along with other people, like Tennessee, even after the episode four stuff that went down, I still like 10 at the end, even though he sadly died as a result of my decisions. In episode 4, Take Us Back, there are game files that were found that supposedly there was going to be a flashback that was going to take us to Sophie and Minerva's house, and we were going to see how Tennessee potentially got his burn marks. Which again, would have you preferred that over the McHale Ranch stuff we got? Possibly, but Ten is again a mysterious character, and I think there's a good enough amount of people that like Ten that would have liked to have seen this. And it's unfortunate. I really think this is something that they could have answered, at least if they even give us, a, you know, a little perspective. I know it really doesn't connect with Clementine's story and all that, but giving us a little look into Ten and his backstory, and even Sophie and Minerva, because again, with stuff that happened with Minerva, maybe at least get to seeing Sophie and stuff, that would have been cool. But an unfortunate situation, we never got anything in regards to Ten's burn marks. All right, let's move on to number nine. Next point that I want to discuss is a big mystery. It's kind of like two and one together. It is in regards to the fate of the Garcia family and what's going on with them, as well as Richmond. Now, I know Kent Metal had already answered this, and I made a video discussing why the Garcia was live, and I made just recently a video about last month talking about the battle in Richmond, potentially, and why I believe Richmond was still around and what was their involvement, maybe potentially in this war with the Delta, as Abel had mentioned, but the big question breaks down to what's going on with the Garcia family? Are there our determinate characters we kept alive still alive, as Cut Metal had said? What's going on with them? Are they in this war with the Delta? Are they safely free of it? But Clementine mentioned in the McCarran Ranch, this area is a war zone, can't go back to Richmond. And does that mean Richmond's just in the heart of everything and you're not gonna be able to go back and see Javier and them? We know season four originally planned for the Garcia family to return, as well as maybe us going back to Richmond, teach AJ baseball and all that, like that dialogue option that we had gotten. This is just one of those mysteries that sucks. And again, like just Tennessee, I would have liked an answer to it. 
Most of these, I'm gonna say that because these are all little things. Again, not everything can be answered in a story, but damn. Hopefully, as Cutmel said, Javier and the family are safe and they're not dead as a result of this war. Let's move on to the next one. At my number eight spot is the Delta and its involvement. Everything about the Delta, the war they're in, who's their leader, why, again, are the Delta so obscene with getting these children even as they are losing this war to whoever the other faction is? Who are they fighting? There's so many questions we could just put with the Delta in general. And one of the ones I wish we would have known is who's the leader? Because I thought from the beginning when we found out Lily was back, I thought Lily was the main leader. But she's only a leader of a small group of Delta Raiders. And there's an actual area where the Delta is located that wasn't, you know, the main little boat area that they had in the final season. I would like to know who's the leader of the Delta, the backstory behind it, how big's the actual area in the Delta, all these questions surrounding it, even more to the beginnings of Lily with the Delta, and exactly how far is the Delta? Why is this Delta leader so obscene with capturing children? Even, you know, they are losing the war, which makes sense, but what is the connection behind it? Why do they think they need children so badly? And one more thing I want to say is, yeah, the biggest question to me, who the hell are they fighting? There's so many possibilities that there could be. But, man, this is the whole mystery of the Delta. I hope one day we get more clarification on it. Now, you're going to hear me in this video reference a couple of characters, and these are definitely big, big mysteries. My number seven spot is the fate of Molly. Now, she can go leave in several different ways. We know if Lee accidentally shoots her, she looks like she gets away in this scene right here. But if Clementine slash Lee hits the shot, we get this final scene with Molly where she decides she's going to leave. And she was so adamant and she was so sure about going on the boat until after all the situation done, I thought one possibility way back that maybe she got bitten. You, you know, you notice there's blood around her. Maybe she got bitten. That's why she didn't want to go on the boat anymore. We don't know that. This is a mystery that is just left open. That there's a lot of possibilities. What convinced Molly to want to leave, though, so badly? And again, it doesn't confirm her as dead, though, if that uh, option I just talked about. So we don't know. She's unknown. And we never are probably going to get an answer to it, but... You know, considering the voice actor of Molly, the same voice actor of Bonnie and all this other stuff, you know, there's a lot more connections to Molly than we think. It's unfortunate. I really liked Molly as a character, and it's a shame we'll never get an answer to this mystery. A sim says he saw 10, 15 of them, a little bit past the old safe zone. I want you to go. You're the boss. We need to know who they are. Maybe even see if they're willing to trade. Just keep your distance until you can make a call. Who, who are? At my number six spot, this is more left up to be ambiguous, but the fact of the matter is this caravan that was hinted at in The Walking Dead, final season's conclusion, if Lewis or Viola was kept alive, that there was a group of survivors that Clementine was made aware of by a sim and either AJ with Lewis or Violet would go the following day to meet them. A lot of people thought maybe this caravan could have old characters, Molly, Krista, Javier, some comic book related characters, anyone maybe that we haven't found yet that could be related to that was potentially hinted with this. But like I said, it's ambiguous. We don't know and it's more like to be kept open. But imagine an old character popping up in this caravan Imagine the DLC where we get to play as AJ after this and we get to find out maybe. But the problem is with this, it's not in every ending. If you keep Tennessee, I'm pretty sure the caravan's still around, but they don't go on this mission in all likeliness. Maybe maybe Clementine has a sim go with somebody, but it's very mysterious. It's, it's just a couple minutes scene that, you know, really starts to get you thinking though. Who's in this caravan? What's their purpose? At my number five spot is the disappearance of Mike and Arvo. We all know in The Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 5, after Arvo shoots Clementine, 
Mike and Arvo disappear. Now, we know Bonnie's a terminus, so I don't really care about her. She's, you know, she's the snake. But with Mike and Arvo, that's the big mystery. Mike had discussed going to Texas. They were trying to take the supplies and run away with the freaking car and all that, but it didn't work out. And the big mystery is their fate. Did they survive in the freezing cold? Were they able to get out and find a community somewhere? I can't believe it though. The metamorphosis of Mike was crazy though. To see him like backstab us like that. He was probably one, going in when I, even before I started YouTube, he was one of my favorite characters in that season two group. And then that betrayal, I just completely lost my mind when it happened. But with Arvo's limp and you know, Mike not being the, probably the most stable, I don't think they would have made it. But Telltale kept that open in regards to whether they survived or not. Now there was a cut death scene that showcased Mike dying. One of the biggest mysteries I have from season two is why was that in the game for like literally a couple days and then scrapped? It's like Telltale had planned it and then boom, they just cut it out like three days after the episode comes out. It was only on the PS3 version if I'm not mistaken, but this is something that really, I think we could have, should have gotten an answer to, or at least, you know, you should have kept the mic death at least. Give us more of a mystery, and damn it, I wanted my revenge on Arvo, and we never got it. At my number four spot is the sacrifice of Kenny, meaning how the heck did he get out of either situation, whether it was saving Krista or saving, well, or putting Ben out of his misery of sorts. And again, both situations look dire as hell, and I'd like to see... I know it's probably not going to happen because there's two different outcomes, but something. Give us some kind of after story DLC. How Kenny met Sarita. How all that happened between how Kenny got out of that certain situation. You don't have to give us a specific, you know, showing of it, but at least give us a general idea. Because I think this is one of the probably most unlikely things that ever happened in the entire series. How Kenny made it out of this situation because both situations look dire as hell. Maybe we'll get a DLC one day or at least something, but damn it, I wanted an answer to this and it stinks that we never did. At my number three spot is Krista's baby. Now the big question with Krista's baby is what happened to it. Now we can take assumptions based on several things in the season. So at the beginning of season two, we realize Krista's pregnant. With Omid, they talk about what they're going to name the child and all that. And then after the scene with Omid's death, we get about a 14, 16 month time skip. And we notice Krista's not pregnant anymore because we think she had, she gave birth to the child. But we figure out that the child's not with them, meaning the child's either missing, dead, or potentially even worse. And it appears once the end of, when we get to the end of episode five, with the situation with AJ happens where Jane hides AJ from Kenny and Clementine says the phrase, not again, not again, probably referencing to Krista's baby. And that gave me the thought that, yeah, looks like Krista slash Clementine, they either lost the baby or the baby died like in a blizzard or something. And it sucks because Krista just looks, you know, she looks demoralized after the, you know, time skip. She does not look the same. She looks more angry. She just looks not as happy, nowhere near as happy as she was before all that stuff went down. All right, we don't do the little intro clips anymore, but number two is Kenny's hat. And man, this is just one that really gets my on my nerves. If you go into Wellington at the end of season two, Kenny gives Clementine his hat to give to AJ when he's older. And we think maybe in the final season, had we gone to Wellington and all that and gone through the tribulations of season three and the garbage it was at times that in the end when AJ was older like he was in the final season that we would get a moment at some point where AJ would be repping Kenny's hat and did we ever get that nope we got Kenny's hat in season three but all we got of it was a little scene in Wellington where we could just take it with us and it's determinant so you don't have to take it but she puts in her bag so that means Clementine still has it and then we still never get it so to make up for it I have Kenny's hat in right here. I have it right here for the Walking Dead Definitive Edition. This is Kenny's hat. That's all we got though. We didn't get it in game, but hey, we get it in real life. So still freaking blows, man. I wish, man. 
Kenny's hat's probably just one of those things that I think a lot of people would have wanted, and I, I'm sad that it never happened. So two quick honorable mentions that I want to say that I thought of when making this video. The first one being the 400 Days characters and what happened to them after the attack on Howes in Season 2, Episode 3. Did they survive? Did they not? Because damn it, that DLC, when you look back at Howes Tree within Season 2, it freaking sucked. Yes, now I could say it sucked because of how bad Telltale incorporated everything together with it. And my second one is the fate of Larry. Was he alive? That's one of the biggest questions I think I could have with season one in general. Did Larry survive his heart attack? Because one of the one of the scenes popped up, Larry's mouth appeared open. And did that mean Larry was alive before Kenny smashed his head in with the salt lick? All right, everyone. Number one, I think you guys know which one. It's been irking me for a long time. At my number one spot, is the fate of Krista. Yes, you guys knew this one was coming. This is one I've discussed on numerous videos. We've had our thoughts, we've had our discussions. The voice actor Clementine has said it before that she believes Krista's alive and we need that answer someday, I think. There's one character out of all the mysteries of with different characters and their fates or not, Krista is that one character that I would like an answer to. Because again, a lot of people think, oh, you heard the gunshot, maybe she survived it. Oh, definitely confirmed she's dead. There's just that mystery, we don't know. And Telltale had had discussion for making season four of bringing Krista back as the villain. So there was even thoughts of Krista being alive before that, you know. Instead of Lily, they would have brought Krista, but they didn't fit, feel Krista fit that character as being a villain. And we may even make another video discussing this because I think I'd like to maybe do something again with it. But... Krista, maybe she's alive, maybe she's, I think she's alive. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of that, but she's one of the best characters, I think, in the series, and I wish we would have gotten an answer, but some things, I guess, are better left mysterious than open, I guess. All right, everyone, but that's going to do it for the video. If you did enjoy this video, again, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you are new. And please go check out any videos in the playlist, my Definitive Edition walkthrough, Season 4 walkthrough, or any videos you may have missed. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll catch you all in the next video next week. All right, y'all have a great one. Doodles. I try to run away, but you're running up on me faster. And I, I could barely breathe. I couldn't do